episode 14, where we are going to actually get a Whitling onto the screen and have him attempt to follow our cubes. So it's been about two weeks since I last posted. Unfortunately, I completely fried my laptop. And then I decided that I wanted to procedurally generate all of these faces and meshes, and I spent a long time doing that. I wrote lots of code, I deleted a lot of code, and I made some progress, but I realized that I really don't need to be spending my time doing this feature, that particular feature. <clears throat> So last night, I started to learn Blender, and I created a whole bunch of brand new faces. You can see these are much prettier. And you know what? Let me save this level test. So the project is going to look a little bit different than when you last saw it. I have obviously made some changes, but most of them are, can be completely ignored, right? Like we don't, you don't care about my code generation or my mesh generation stuff that actually doesn't affect the game in any way. So I was actually able to, what is that? Cube rotation test. So you can see I made this really pretty looking goal object here. Pretty exciting. Eh? And so you can see that the cube faces look a lot better. <clears throat> I did take the time to implement these curves, make things a lot nicer. And also now we have corner exits and entries to our cubes. And I was worried that this wouldn't work, but shockingly it does. It's a lot harder actually. <laughs> Oh, sometimes it does. I take it back. Yeah, there's definitely still some bugs in here. <clears throat> with our with my cube generation stuff. Yeah, it doesn't know what to do about this four-way crossing. And that's something I personally haven't even decided how I'm going to handle that yet. <clears throat> Excuse me. So just kind of wanted to show you where the game is, <clears throat> update its state a little bit, and we're going to go to a much simpler scene. <clears throat> I think this scene is mostly just for testing if my path following worked. But my level test, my goal is, my next goal, actually, I can show you my list of goals here. <clears throat> you can see I did a whole bunch of stuff like math and all this fun writing, trying to figure out how to wind all these verts. Eventually it was deemed a total failure. But I learned a lot, and in the future, if I want to continue that feature and move it forward and develop it, I've already got a decent base to start from. So, these are my priorities. First, our level loop. Enter a level. Beat a level. <clears throat> um, I need camera controls. This is going to be tricky. I've done a fair bit of documentation on how I want my camera to work, but you know, as soon as I start testing it out, all of that's probably going to go right out the window. So we'll see how that works. <clears throat> I'm also curious about editor cube placement. I want a very fast way to build and hand design these levels to make them nice and fun. I'm probably going to rework pathing, especially now that I have these nine, or these uh, corner exits and entries in there. Mobile input, so tap and drag to spin. Obscured cube selection. This is going to be a biggie. It ties into the camera controls. <clears throat> oh man, my throat's killing me. And actually, that's funny. Pathing animations down here at the very bottom, that's something we're going to try to focus on today along with the level loop. So, let's get to it. Um, I went on Mixamo.com. Mixamo is an excellent site. Uh, Adobe just bought it. It's essentially a placeholder art and placeholder humanoid mesh animation website. So you can upload your humanoid mesh to Mixamo. It will auto rig it for you. And then you can apply the thousands or hundreds of animations that they have on the site to your model. I'm going to be using this Mr. Y bot. 
I like him a lot. He's just a simple placeholder dude. And he's got this uh, strut walking animation that I picked. So I wanted my whittlings to look nice and dumb, you know, just sort of flaunting around like I don't have a care in the world, even though they're in the middle of space and everything's exploding around them. Obviously, we will replace this later with something more, I don't know, custom is my hope. But never ask for art until you can put it directly in the game and test it. If I was making this game with a group of people, I would put a placeholder in the game, make sure all, the, all my code worked, and then I would talk to the artist and be like, hey, artist, um, I've got these slots for you to insert your art into the game, and then you can run the game and test it and see how it looks. Just a good workflow uh, when you're working on a team. Nobody wants to spend a week making art that they find out never got used because the feature was never completed or the feature was thrown out later. <clears throat> um, so we've got our Y bot, we've got our strut walking animation. Let's create our empty game object for our Whitling game object. So instead of putting this at the origin, I'm going to put it at 0 0.05. What is that? some wrong key and get rid of the highlighting. So I just want my Whitling to hang out right in the beginning of the start cube. And that's going to be his base position. His core position is going to be in between his feet on the ground. And then like we did with our cubes, I'm going to have a game object for meshes. I pluralize this because in the future our Whitlings might have like hats or other things, some other type of art around them. I'm not too sure what. And now what we can do is we can drop our Ybot, which is the name of this placeholder mesh, into the level. Yay, nice! So one thing I want to pay attention to, we can see first of all he's gigantic. And instead of scaling the Whitling itself, I'm just going to scale this mesh, this game object here. 0 0.3 looks pretty good, nice. I also want to make sure that the forward of the mesh lines up with the forward of the base object, the base parent object. Okay, that's looking good. And let's spin him, let's do, I think it would be 90 degrees on the Y. Just so he's looking the right way, cool. So what steps do we need to take in order to get our guy following? So we have two options. We could focus on the animation and get his strut walking first, which is only going to be... Actually, that'll be no lines of code, so I see no problem doing that first. Um, so the animator appears to be on this guy here. I don't know how I feel about that. And I think that's what we want. Now we're going to need a controller for this. So let's drop a controller in here. Animation controller. This will be Ybot, or we'll call it Whitling controller. Because eventually this Ybot will be replaced. And so we're going to need to drop this animation into our animator. So I wish we could just, oh my god, it's beautiful. Let's test it out. Okay, played once, it did not loop. We're gonna need to make sure that loops. So if I select the animation and we'll go to edit, 
loop time loop pose apply. <clears throat> nice. Spinning still works fine. You can see we've got our corners in here. You can see my path does follow the corners sometimes, not all the time. Kind of want to, when I rotate a cube, to send a message to this path to recalculate. I think that would be a nice little. Let's make a note of that to do. Find path. Or no, this is a cube rotate. It's complete. We calculate debug path line render. <clears throat> so yeah, setting up the animation is pretty simple. Obviously the animation state machine is going to get a lot more complex as the game continues forward. But for now, it might even be a little bit too big still. I'm not worried about that. That's visual stuff. I'm more curious about practicality and testing purposes. So let's bump down in here and let's make a Whitling movement script. We'll drop it on our main object. And there's no need to make this a prefab just yet. <clears throat> Only if we wanted to generate them at runtime, or if we wanted to make sure they were on a one-to-one -one ratio across all of our scenes. So I'll make sure this works, and then eventually we'll turn it into a prefab. Let's think about what we need for our Whitling movement. What time at? Okay. Hmm, I know I'm going to want a bool for is walking. And I know that I'm probably going to want a path node or target node. I'm also considering using on trigger enter. Yeah, I like that plan. Ooh, that means our whittling is going to need a rigid body. Or does it? Hmm, that's worth testing. Remember, test the easiest stuff first. Excuse me. So it looks like we didn't get anything from that. Let's try creating some feet. I guess we'll call this foot collider, feet collider, core collider. I'm not sure. 0 0.5 is way too big. I think 0 0.1 is also much, much too large. Uh, let's reduce it by a factor of 10. A nice tiny dot that represents where our guy is. Still no dice. Let's try a rigid body. No gravity. They're whittlings. They don't care about gravity. Node! There we go. So our whittling has noticed that he has overlapped a node now. Looking good.
Let's reopen Visual Studio. Okay. So we'll just do an early out here. And if he's not walking yet, we know that a Whitling overlapped his first node. And then get linked path node. So if we overlap the first one, this target node is going to be the one that it is linked to. Okay. That seems good. I will say if he is walking, let's do some vector math to calculate the direction we want to go. Although I guess we could just calculate the direction whenever we overlap a new node. Will the node locations change, I guess, is the real question. Um, let's say, sure, let's just put it there. Let's do a note. Um, this could possibly be recalculated on node overlap. So I'm drawing a line from me to my target node. So that's target node transform position minus my position. Let's normalize that bad boy. <clears throat> and then we will translate our little dude along the direction times time dot delta time times, I guess we'll call this walk speed. And we'll do space dot world. We will need to define this walk speed, that is correct. That's something we can serialize. I think the designers might want to toggle with that variable. And let's just start it off at a basic one unit per second. No reference. Hmm. I think our target node is null. Our Whitling did overlap our first node. That's looking good. Yeah, target node, nothing. Whoa, hey. That's right. So our linked path nodes, that's how we move from cube A to cube B. So 
But it's not actually. Let's make a get next node in our overlapped. Our path node has an index. What does our cube face have for us? We can break paths, validate nodes. Ooh, that's pretty dangerous. It has the path node list. So our Whitling is going to need to know, let's comment this out. Our Whitling is going to need to know let's call this path index increment. And we'll just take it one step at a time, right? So Let's pretend that we don't know that the first thing a Whitling touches has an index of zero. So if overlapped get index is zero, then our increment equals one. And you know what, we could turn this into a ternary operator. So if this is true, we're giving it a 1. If it's false, we're going to give it a negative 1. So that means that our target node I think we're going to want to know what face we're on as well. That seems like a good idea. So current face, we're going to get the owning face, cool. And once we have the current face, and we have the increment direction that we want to go. Let's have a current path index. Okay. <clears throat> oh, yeah, we can just get the index, right? The one we overlapped, that's the current one that we're on. And so, 
Once we've set up these variables, we should be able to calculate the next node on the face. So we'll increment the current path index. And then now we can say target node is equal to current face get path node current path index. This is our first time through. We probably want to extract this into its own function, at least a fair bit of it. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Slow you down, buddy. Zero point two. Slow you down by a factor of five. Huh. Yeah, zero point two looks pretty nice. Kind of a swagger, confident, stupid walk. I like it. So if is walking is false, then we know we're already currently pathing. So let's add our path increment index. And we'll say if CPI is less than zero or CPI is Let's do greater than or equal to current face, get path node count. This happens, we know it's time to move on to the next face, and let's print that out. Nice, okay. Oh wow, you know what? Almost all of this is the same when we get on a new face. Let's try that out. So private So we'll start pathing, we'll pass it this overlapped here, we can replace overlapped with start. Cool. So now we know that if we get to the last path node, then it's time to get linked. So let's just try this. Start pathing, new face, overlapped, get linked. No reference in eighty. Has it always been, we've been locked on this? Yeah, we have. Oh, it failed right here.
There is no linked path node. But our path seems to think there is. Linked path node. It sucks how none and node look so similar. Man, come on, guys. Up ill face, that's it. That has an index of two. I wonder if I'm overlapping both at the same time. So let's make sure we overlap our target node before we do any of this other stuff. Hey, moving to the next face. Nice. Still not quite. Oh, I need to recalculate. No. So let's let's print out something more useful than just path node. Parent. Parent. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, that's whittling movement. Ruffle. That should be overlapped. So we got two prints of up L path face. Let's get rid of this collapse. Yeah. Begin, end, get some matches, up, L, left, L, uh-oh, <laughs> that's pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, too good. Hmm. Up L. This is an index of zero, one, two. Let's put a breakpoint in here. See what's actually going on. How's the time? Going pretty well. <clears throat> Boop, there we go. So we know that our path index increment should be negative one in this case. Cool. 
current path index should be 2, up L, current path is 1, yes, inner node, so we're going to the inner node. Mmm. Okay, so we overlapped once, we incremented the current path index, but we never updated um, the target node. Get path node. Oh, loading in midstream. <laughs> yes. It was a moonwalk now. What's up, buddy? Yeah, I like that. Uh huh. So we are not handling. This should be a dead end, and then we say goodbye to our heroic buddy. And let's return out of the function. Maybe we could say uh, to do move this to a more appropriate area. Let's break it. Oh. Nice. Let's make spacebar spawn a whittling, shall we? <clears throat> We could also, I kind of want to get his turning correct, but we are only working in a 2D space currently. That's fine. That's fine. We don't need to worry about our 3D-ness yet. Uh, let's instead of, I'm just going to snap it here for the sake of ease. Do lerp rotation instead of snapping. I guess I could just look at Oh boy, that was a mistake. Oh, dead end. 
<laughs> we, should, we should definitely check for the goal um, before we... Do that. Um, where's our cube end? So we got a goal here. And we'll tag our node as a goal. Don't need to print this anymore. Things are going well. And we can say a whittling miraculously. Escaped. There we go. Moving to next base. Hmm. He miraculously escaped and he died at the same time. It's a little bit dark. Make sure that doesn't happen. Okay. How are we going to do this turn? So, we've got our path. <clears throat> and I think it would be kind of cool if, because the way I have the path set up is I have this radius around the center of the cube. And that's like the thing that makes the edges of our path here. And if this is the node path, these straight lines, I think what I'd like to do is maybe have him cut this corner, but that presents a problem because Currently, our path node is very small and right here. So if we want our guy to walk like so, I do have a rotate towards that live inside vector three. So that is a possible tool. But if he's, if he's walking, he's like rotating, but still sliding this way. I mean, that, look, that might look kind of funny. Let's see what happens. Um, so, let's see. Yeah, his position, his target node, instead of the transform look at. Let's make a private vector three for target forward. 
And eventually we're going to want to target up as well for when the Whitling walks along the corners of these things, right? But for now, forward is just fine. So, target forward. It's interesting, I only have to do it right here as well, because he's only going to be changing paths on faces with three path nodes. It's a very small area where this needs to happen. I don't need to do it every time. I will need to do the up when it comes to face transitions. So it's nice to have those separated as well. So a target forward. I want to go from my current node, or from me, to the target node. So, this transform position. Maybe we need a bull for is turning too. You know what we can do, actually? Um, we could make a leverage our art to make this easier on ourselves. So imagine that we've got our Whitling. And he walks, and he gets to this point, and maybe he does, like, a spin move. And then he just starts pointing the direction that he wants to go, and then starts, you know, sauntering again. That way we don't have to worry about doing this curve. Maybe we could do the curve later. I'm not too sure. But I'm trying not to get caught up in the polish or the details. I want the broad strokes first. But let's see what happens with this. So if he is turning... Current forward. You know, let's just do it this way. Forward equals vector three rotate towards. So my current is this one. My target is the target forward. Max radians delta. Maybe like one times time dot delta time. We might want to change this to ni control dot. I don't want a constant. Okay. I want this to be rotate speed. Radiance. I have no idea what this max magnitude delta is. And that was rotate speed radiance. And then we'll just do a quick check here. 
if it's equal to target forward is turning equals false. I think this is going to look very silly. Huh. You know, that doesn't look half bad. In fact, maybe what we could do <clears throat> I see no issue with expanding the size of the collider of the center node of any curved path faces let's see how this looks before we do anything with it let's Oh, that's pretty large. That's not what we want. So let's change this point two. Sure. They're actually turning now. Ooh. Oh, yeah, he overlapped the node. So we made our node a little bit bigger. But that means that once he got right here, he automatically found this node and started taking this shortcut. Hmm. Yeah, let's just put that back and speed up the, the turn. I do believe that was point oh five. There we go. And then what did we want to do? Find our Watlin. Three. Triple that. <sighs> Damn, that looks friggin' good. Wow. Whitling miraculously escaped. Very nice, boys. Hmm. What else can I do? Um, almost out of time. Is there anything I could clean up in here? This looks good. This turning code could pre-calculate this direction. Where would we do that? We would do that. Maybe we would do that. Wait a minute, our target forward and our direction are the same thing. Except one is normalized. 
Um, we did use lerp instead of snapping. Let's make sure that this works again before we go patting ourselves on the back. No! <laughs> okay, boys, what do we do wrong? We need to recalculate this in... When we start pathing a new face... No, no, that's not what I wanted. No. I guess it's fine. Attaching to a debugger, I'm okay with that. Nah, it's a waste. I've changed my mind. Okay. Oh boy. That was a close one. Okay. Solid. Oof. Oof, that was pretty darn close. What? <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> what happened there, buddy? <laughs> oh boy, what are you? Right straight path base is yes, link. What? Okay. So if I hit you now, I should do goofy stuff. Yeah. It's got four points on it. One, two, three, four. So you can't move that. Well, it's good. Our inner faces are still. He's off. He's way out there in the distance. Keep going, little man. We'll do it. Um. So I think this is a good place to stop. We did a lot. Let's see if we can rec recreate that. And now he should walk down, shouldn't he? Hmm, well that's definitely on the list of things to fix tomorrow. <clears throat> but that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I think tomorrow maybe we'll get him... See, we need to... We really need to fix our pathing before we do anything else. Maybe that's what we'll start on. Ooh, camera controls. But our level loop and our pathing animations, this is drawing with the mouse, so it's terrible. They are pretty much done. I would say next on the list are pathing and camera controls. So, have a good day. I'll see you guys tomorrow.